I want to get back to the President-elect Trump's surprise announcement last night. Yes, he did. He made the announcement, basically. Watch this. I don't want to tell you this because I want to save the suspense for next week. So I will not tell you. I refuse to tell And don't let it outside of this room. Do you promise? Raise your hand. We are going to appoint Mad Dog Mattis as our Secretary of Defense. That's how you make an announcement, isn't it? That's how you do it. Now, the general is known to his troops as Mad Dog Mattis. The general's known for speaking, shall we say, colorfully. I've got a couple of examples for you. He told Marines stationed in Iraq, quote, The first time you blow someone away is not an insignificant event. That said, there are some expletive deleted in the world that just need to be shot. And this... A message to Iraqi leaders after the initial Iraq invasion, quote, I come in peace, I didn't bring artillery, but I'm pleading with you, with tears in my eyes, if you expletive with me, I'll kill you all. General Jack Ooh. Key is with us now. I, I want to see if he's smiling. On first no, he's not no. smiling. I thought that was kind of rough, tough stuff. I thought you would approve of that, General. No? Well, that's only one part of uh, Jim Mattis. I mean, I think we've got to have some tolerations for... Some of our general officers throughout our history who have led our troops in major campaigns are at times very colorful people. And I, I, I hope the American people understand that and support it. I think but they he love is it. more than that. I, general, yeah, I, I think I agree they with you. flat out love it. That's what they want, not this double talk. They want that kind of thing, don't they? Well, they're going to get that kind of directness. And I, frankly, I think that's one of the reasons why President-elect Trump seems to be drawn to a number of military leaders because of that directness and bluntness uh, and also the fact that they've got a portfolio of leadership success. But uh, on, on Jim Mattis, I mean, he, he, he's much more than, than just what we talked up on the screen there. He's also very cerebral, studious, mm -hmm. thoughtful. Yeah. I mean, he's got 7,000 books reportedly in, a, in his library. Sitting next to his bed is a, is a book that he refers to quite often uh, dealing with uh, meditations of Marcus Aurelius, and who is uh, an emperor and a philosopher. You lost uh, me. <laughs> I've never read a, I've never read a stitch in it. You I've never read me. a stitch of it. But, but, wait a sec. Now, he's also called for the U.S. to back a two-state solution in the Middle East. That might run counter to some policy from the Trump administration, no? I believe most people who come into the administration... Uh, who have a portfolio of leadership dealing with national security and foreign policy will always have differing views on certain aspects of that because listen this is a complicated world out there nobody nobody has ownership of these problems in terms of solutions some of them are very intractable and you can make an argument on either side of the case for it certainly some, something something like that will be discussed in the national security team. The president-elect will make his decision, and everybody will jump on that decision and support it. Okay. Uh, General Jack Keane, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, about, uh, I don't like to say mad dog Mattis. I don't think that he doesn't like it himself, I believe. But thanks for telling us all about him. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jack.